everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, we're going to be talking about this star right here in the constellation Orion. Uh, hopefully everyone's familiar with that constellation. It's pretty much the most obvious one when you look up in the night sky. Uh, the most notable or the part that stands out the most, I think, is Orion's belt. It's th these three stars that are uh, more or less in a row. Uh, the Great Pyramids match these when you look at, at the pyramids from a bird's eye view, satellite view. Um, yeah, we're going to be talking about this star, okay, the right side of Orion's shoulder, and it's called Betelgeuse. And yes, that is how it's pronounced, Betelgeuse. And we've talked about this star before. It seems like it seems like the story is not over, uh, which I didn't know until I got this email from uh, Eric Brinkerhoff. He says, "Long time first or long time listener, first time commenter." While I'm while I'm at it, I had an impression to hand out the Book of Mormon, and I've been doing so since. But let's say 25 cents the talk, and no online sends yet. Um, this is a good segue to here's the update of the Book of Mormon sharing challenge, otherwise known as the Flood the Earth challenge. We have crossed over the 6,000 mark. It's been uh, Something that I've been looking forward to for a long time, all the way since, holy cow, March. <clears throat> so it's taken um, about a little less than three months, really, because it was the end of March. But ever since March, uh, we have shared a thousand more copies of the Book of Mormon, which is really good. And back then, we were at 466 people that are part of the, ch the challenge. And as of right now, we're only three away from 600. So keep it up, everybody. Uh, we're all doing really good work. Let's do it together. It helps encourage other people to share copies of the Book of Mormon that they may not have otherwise shared. Whenever you uh, report it to me, make sure to include hashtag flood or just the word flood. It helps me find your comment easier and make sure to keep the comments short. Okay, so back to this. So he says, um, uh, asterisk, possible star explosion to be able to be able to be seen during the day for a year. So a, a star exploding and being able to be seen in the daytime for an entire year. That's what he's saying. And we're talking about Betelgeuse. Uh, again, we're going to go through the history of the recent history of Betelgeuse, and I think it is a sign in the heavens. I'll show you why. Uh, Eric continues, could that be possible some of the greatest manifestations of the power we have ever witnessed? Uh, he's referencing President Nelson's talk where he said between now and when Christ comes again, we'll see the greatest man manifestations of the Savior's power that the world has ever seen. And the answer is, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, if it explodes, that'll certainly be powerful. Uh, so far, the most powerful thing that humanity has ever recorded and knew that it was the most powerful uh, was that GRB burst or gamma ray burst uh, one week after President Nelson said that. That was the most powerful explosion and the brightest explosion that humanity ever had ever witnessed. And it was one week to the day that he said that. So, but this would certainly, uh, I think, probably be in that category if Beetlejuice exploded. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, sign possibly goes with the Sea of Glass video, right? I love listening to you, and what I enjoy the most is it's not an opinion. It's backed. And as always, taken with salt. Yes. Yes, everything should be backed by church doctrine. <laughs> we have a church for a reason. Uh, we don't just go off on tangents. It's okay to speculate, but that's when you take... You take that with a grain of salt, right? But we always need to stick to, um, we need to find the foundation for what we believe and go to authoritative uh, purpose uh, sources. All right, and then he finishes, I'm from Delta, Utah originally, but moved to Goodyear, Arizona eight years ago. Uh, he's saying that because that's where I used to live. Goodyear, Arizona. It's in the Phoenix metro area in the southwest part of the valley. It's very nice. Um, I enjoyed my time there. And then he finishes, que le vaya con Dios. Uh, so I guess he speaks Spanish. Maybe he went on his mission to a Spanish-speaking mission. All right. Thank you, Eric. And so he gives us an article to look at from, not, <laughs> from Yahoo News. Before we do that, let's refresh our memory with uh, what was going on with Beetlejuice 
in 2019. So a month after general conference of that year, okay, maybe let me zoom out just a little bit. That was too much. So just sometime in November, uh, I haven't been able to find an exact date so far, but in November, they noticed that that star, Betelgeuse, dimmed. And at the time, they didn't know why. They have some better ideas now of what caused that. But again, it doesn't matter if you can explain a phenomena. It doesn't mean that it's not a sign, especially with such a prominent star as Betelgeuse. Uh, let's look at the constellation again. Betelgeuse is the brightest star of that constellation, and it's a different color. And, uh, you know, again, anyone who has looked up at the night sky, you know, it's, it's kind of harder to pick out... Um, the zodiac, uh, unless you're, unless like you're familiar with it, but you know, Orion's not part of the zodiac. Uh, just everybody knows Orion, I would assume. And so, uh, this is probably the, the most popular, the most well-known, uh, constellation. And like I said, probably mostly because of Orion's belt, because it just looks so peculiar. So when, when a star, especially the brightest star of this constellation dims, that's when I take note. But let's look at the timing of that. So it dimmed in November. And in that same month, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic began. I, I, I'm just saying that. I'm not saying that they're necessarily related, but I think we should probably take note of that. So the brightest star in Orion dims the same month that the COVID pandemic starts in one uh, month after general conference. Uh, this went on, let's see, this went on until March of 2020, just one month before general conference. And this is the month where the angel Moroni, you see it right here on the 18th of March, that's the month in the year that the angel Moroni dropped his trumpet from the Salt Lake Temple. It was the 77th day of the year, which is interesting. Uh, two days later, that's when the missionaries were called home. And shortly after that, yeah, so on the 20th, the missionaries were called home. And then five days after that, all temples worldwide closed due to the pandemic. And as far as I know, since the beginning of this dispensation, there hasn't been a time like that where all temples have closed. That by itself is a sign. It's a sign of how far Satan's come, what he's been able to do. Um, his restrictions on religious freedom or like trying to impose restrictions on religious freedom went pretty far. So while all this is going on, the brightest star in Orion dims. Very odd. The month that COVID starts and then it ends or it brightens back up uh, at the same time that the angel Moroni dropped his trumpet from the Salt Lake Temple. Okay, so very, very interesting stuff. Um, there's other things here that you can look at, but, you know, uh, yeah, nothing that I want to mention right now. Okay, so let's get to this first article. So I pulled up three because they have uh, different bits of information. We're, we're going to get to the one that Eric shared um, second, but we're going to start with this one from The Guardian. It's by Helen Sullivan, uh, May 25th of this year. The title is, It's New Territory. Why is Betelgeuse glowing so brightly and behaving so strangely? Oh, so now it's bright. Before it was dim, now it's bright. But that's not all. There's, there's uh, a lot of details to this. Okay, one of the brightest stars in the sky is behaving strangely, pulsating from bright to dim, twice as fast as usual and giving scientists an unprecedented that means never before insight into how stars die betelgeuse the closest red supergiant to earth has long been understood to move between brighter and dimmer in 400 day cycles but from late 2019 to early 2020 some pretty critical years we just discussed that it underwent what astrophysicists called the great dimming, quote unquote. 
as a dust cloud obscured our view of the star. Now it is glowing at 150% of its normal brightness, and it's cycling between brighter and dimmer at 200 day intervals, twice as fast as usual. What's another word for that? Hastening. It, for some reason, it's hastening. It's speeding up. Um, is that connected to the time that we live? I don't know. But yeah, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when a prominent star like that starts speeding up twice as fast as usual, there's probably a message in that. According to astrophysicist Andrea Dupree of the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, it is currently, okay, right now, as this is happening, it is currently the seventh brightest star in the night sky. Seven. Up three places from its usual tenth brightest. So, uh, relative to other stars in the sky, it uh, jumped up quite a bit in brightness uh, into the number seven spot. I don't need to tell you, hopefully, the significance of the number seven. Uh, but let's just remind ourselves, seven typically means perfection, but more importantly, uh, as we're thinking about the second coming, completeness, completion, the end. In the southern hemisphere sky, it can be spotted glowing brightly in the early evening at the shoulder of the Orion constellation. All right, let's look at that again. This is Orion. It's his right shoulder. He's facing us, so it's his right shoulder. All right. Um, as days grow shorter in the northern hemisphere, it will be visible there too. Betelgeuse is expected to explode sometime in the next 10,000 to 100,000 years. Quote, one of the coolest things about Betelgeuse is that we're watching the final stages of a big star, uh, big star evolution play out almost in real time for us, which we've never really been able to study in this much depth before says Dr. Sarah Webb, an astrophysicist at Swinburne University uh, of Technology in Australia. The final stages. And once you know, we are in the final stages of um, this 6,000 year period. We're, we're almost to the end. There's a lot of uh, parallels, it seems, with this star. Okay, going twice as fast, and we're in the final stages, and uh, this is happening during President Nelson's presidency. Okay, what else, what else? Um, there are records from ancient Egypt of what appears to be a star exploding as a supernova. The Egyptians described the appearance of a quote-unquote second sun in the sky, says Webb. The great dimming was caused by the star spitting out a lump of gas and dust like chewing gum or what scientists call a, quote, surface mass ejection, uh, caused by anomalous, anomalous, <laughs> anomalously hot convective plume. All right, let's skip down. Uh, the paper Dupree co-authored with other scientists from Harvard and the University of California, Berkeley, concludes that it will be five to ten years before Betelgeuse returns to its normal 400-day cycles. So, there's a lot of you that are looking at that time frame, so I'll highlight that for you. Next uh, five to ten years. Who, who the heck knows if they're right? They don't even know if they're right. Uh, they didn't even know that that dimming was going to happen. All, all science can do is observe, just like us. You know, and... They can make useful predictions, which many times are right, but they don't really know. And we don't really know until things actually happen. In fact, it seems to me that humanity uh, does a pretty crappy job of uh, guessing the future. Th that's what I've noticed. Across all disciplines, uh, every aspect of life, we are, we are all terrible at guessing the future. Sometimes we're right. Sometimes, you know, there's models and stuff, uh, you know, but but we can't guess it 100 percent. So anyway, quote, since the dimming, Betelgeuse's light and radial velocity curves have been markedly different from its past. It's new territory. We haven't seen this before. That always catches my attention whenever there's something that we haven't seen before. Uh, I feel like that's usually one of the surest ways to know that 
it's a sign. Um, I mean, that could be faulty thinking, but I, I kind of don't think so. Anyway, what, what amplifies this, like I said, is the timing with these other events. President Nelson's presidency. Um, in fact, wait, let me, let me go back here. Um, I want to say, uh, was it the November or April? Hold on. Give me just one second. Um, President Russell M. Nelson, come follow me. General Conference. I think it was April 2019. Was it? No, I don't want to go there. Sorry. Uh, this was April 2019. So this is this is the conference in which he said, again, he showed a picture of a completely burnt down town, Paradise, California. And at the end of the talk, and uh, with really interesting body language, he says, time is running out. So, you know, that happens in April. And then later that year, you have this happen, the great dimming. I feel like the Lord is being mighty generous in giving everybody, the entire world, but especially the church, a uh, fair warning in advance of what's going to happen. Like ample warning, right? To the point where the prophet is saying time is running out in April 2019. Uh, we should probably take that seriously. Okay, so... I think that was it for this article. There's there's more. Now we're going to go to the article that Eric shared. Uh, this is a newer article by Frank Landymore, June 15th of this year. Just uh, oh, That was yesterday. If Beetlejuice explodes, it'll be so bright you could see it during the day for a year. Could you imagine that? Be, seeing a, a light like that? I don't know. Uh, well, there's details. Okay, so... Over the past few years, the red supergiant, already one of the brightest stars in the night sky, has gone from dimming dramatically between 2019 to 2020 to burning brighter than ever. Since April. Okay, so this is where I got a pee. Uh, <laughs> I got a key piece of <laughs> information. Jeez Louise. <laughs> My wife's laughing at me. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. Okay, April of this year, that's when this started. So going from 2019 and skipping all the way forward to April right here. That's when this has started. Interesting time for it to start considering the last uh, three general conferences. I'm not going to rehash all of that. But at the same time, there's all sorts of things going on in the heavens right now. I'll, I'll rehash that. You, you, you have to do it so that it's all, you can see the big picture. We're going to start with Rosh Hashanah. That's the, the Jewish New Year. It's when they changed the date. Okay, so. Um, no, actually, we're going to start with August 13th, 2022, because that's the mirror date of when the angel Moroni dropped his trumpet. Okay. And what I mean by that is August is the eighth month. So eight, one, three. And the date for the angel Moroni dropping his trumpet trumpet was three, one, eight. So eight, one, three, three, one, eight. The first event, everything went quiet. He dropped his trumpet. Missionary work stopped. Uh, going to the temple stopped. But uh, in the April General Conference of 2022, there was a big call out for missionaries, so everything got loud. And what you had happen on this day was there was a large uh, meteor boom over uh, northern Utah in southern Idaho. Okay, very interesting. And then on Rosh Hashanah, on that day, on the eve of Rosh Hashanah, that's when Jupiter was the closest to Earth. In 59 years. In Hebrew, uh, Jupiter is called Zedek, which means justice or righteousness. Happened at the beginning of the new year. Uh, and by the way, this Rosh Hashanah, we transitioned from a sabbatical year. 
that was the last Hebrew year, uh, which was the Saturday of years, according to Judaism, uh, because they don't recognize the resurrection, their Sabbaths on Saturday. And so as far as the Jews are concerned, we are now in the Sunday of years. So I don't know if Christ uh, wants to really emphasize to the Jews, no, I did perform the resurrection and I'm coming on the Sunday of years. So that, that's just something to think about. But Jupiter showed up at the beginning of the year. Uh, after that, on um, the eve of the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, that's when we saw the most powerful explosion ever seen, gamma ray burst GRB 221009A, exactly one week uh, after President Nelson said, between now and when Christ comes again, we're going to see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power the world has ever seen. It literally happened, in a sense, a week to the day after he said that. Um, three days after that, we saw, uh, well, this is kind of hard to explain, but basically this interesting star that has rings around it, it has at least 17 rings. I'm not going to go into 17, but some of you know what that means. There was a partial solar eclipse over Russia, which is not very common. I looked into it. I did a video about it. That comes at a time when Russia is invading Ukraine, which is really interesting. On the 8th of November, we had the first ever election day blood moon lunar eclipse. Probably not a good sign. I don't think it takes much to understand that that's probably not a good thing. A blood moon on election day, probably not good. On Christmas, we had three giant asteroids pass Earth, and there was a what's called an octet planetary alignment, eight planets in a line. Uh, I did a video about that. I'm not going to go into all the details, but uh, the eighth day of Hanukkah and Christmas were on the same day this year. And as they, as the Jews were lighting their eighth candle, there was eight lights in the sky, all in a line. There was a, a heavenly uh, menorah, essentially. Okay, after that, now we're in 2023. We had an interesting comet that came. Uh, we had an unprecedented vortex on the sun's north pole that puzzled scientists. So basically a crown on the, nor on the sun's north pole. And there's footage of that that you can watch. By the way, all the references, for those that are new, all the references for all this information is in column R. So if you want to go look this stuff up, click on the link below for my spreadsheets. Come to this spreadsheet, Timeline Second Coming, and then go to column R. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to skip a couple here. We had a meteor that exploded over Texas exactly 10 years after the Shelyabinsk Russia meteor, uh, which was a really significant meteor, by the way. Um, in March, we had the Venus, Jupiter, and Mercury, Saturn double conjunction, which is very rare to have four planets uh, involved in a double conjunction. I looked it up. I did a video about it. The ones that we were able to see just with the naked eye was Venus and Jupiter, and boy, did it look weird. It looked pretty amazing. Okay, and then that brings us up to this video that I'm doing. Uh, a month after that, that's when Betelgeuse starts shining at 150% its usual brightness. And it jumps from the number 10 spot to the number 7 spot. And its bright to dim cycle is now twice as fast as usual. Okay, that same month, uh, a very rare daytime. I need to include that. I don't know why I didn't put this here. Rare, oops. Rare daytime meteor explodes over Israel and, and caused a, an audible boom. Very rare. Israel is a geographically tiny country, and for this to happen during the daytime, and over northern Israel, which is over Megiddo, right? Armageddon, the place of Armageddon. Uh, that happened. That happened this year, at the same time that Betelgeuse started shining. Uh, brighter than ever, it would seem. Okay, and then we had a rare hybrid eclipse. I'm going to okay, move past that. There, there's just there's so much that I could cover here, but th those, are, those are like probably the, the biggest ones. 
it's been a very active year, uh, Hebrew year and year of 2023 in the heavens. Okay, so going back to this, so since April, Betelgeuse has beamed at over 150% of its usual brightness, at times outshining all the other stars in its constellation Orion. It's now been bumped to the seventh brightest star overall, up from number 10. And then moving on, it says, the short answer, according to a new essay he penned for the conversation, is that it would be so resplendent that you could see it, uh, or its imploded, its imploded remnants, at least, during even the daylight and for up to a whole year. Okay, talking about what, what would it be like to see the supernova. Okay, the, the astronomers, okay, to astronomers, the first indicator of Betelgeuse's destruction would actually be particles. Quote, we first would detect a rain of massless particles called neutrinos. And by the way, neutrinos are notoriously hard to detect because they don't interact with uh, regular matter and particles. Uh, I watched a documentary about, a documentary about it one time. It was really cool, uh, which would be harmless to us. It'll... El, what? Elstra, Elstra writes, after that, the star would quickly brighten. End quote. At that stage, Betelgeuse would become a luminous, a, as luminous as the full moon. Okay. Could you imagine that? At that stage, Betelgeuse would become as luminous as the full moon. It would then gradually fade from this peak, but remain visible in daylight for a lengthy 6 to 12 months. After sunset, though, is when the doom star would really get to shine. Quote, at night, you'd be able to see it with the naked eye for another one or two years. Uh, but after that, uh, we would never see it again. All right, that's it from this article. And then I have one more, just a couple things from here. Uh, this is um, space.com written by Teresa uh, Polterova. Odd supergiant star Betelgeuse is brightening up. Is it about to go supernova? Okay, end of life. Although Betelgeuse has since recovered its usual brightness, the star has not been quite its odd self since the great dimming. Uh, its 400-day brightness oscillation period has halved, to 200 days, and on top of that, the star now appears to be going through the extra brightening that excites sky watchers. All right, so it's kind of redundant, but um, I just like how that was worded. Let's see. Okay, the astronomer added, according to historical records, Betelgeuse used to be described as a yellow star up until 2,000 years ago. Okay, now that that's kind of an interesting bit of information, don't you think? Because what was happening 2,000 years ago, if you were to go exactly 2,000 years ago, Christ would be 23 years old right now. Um, it was during Christ's lifetime. It, it was, at that time, they were describing it as yellow. But what happens after that? What happens after 2,000 years? Okay, when poets began describing it as red, so it used to be a yellow star, and then about the time of Christ, maybe up until the day of his crucifixion, who knows, it was yellow, but then after that, they describe it as red. Can you believe that? So this seems to potentially be linked to Christ, and then it's, it's acting really oddly right now during this very critical time. It dimmed, just as a reminder, so it dimmed the same month that COVID started. Uh, and this was President Nelson's second year as president of the church. Um, and then it stopped dim dimming the same month that the angel Moroni dropped his trumpet from the Salt Lake Temple, which um, went along with, or it seems correlated to, uh, the missionaries coming home and the temples closing. <laughs> This star, in my mind at this point, uh, seems to be a really big sign 
uh, through time, at least going back to the time of Christ. Around that time, that's when it started being described as red. Okay. Um, second son. Okay, but Montargis, Martages. Uh, understands the excitement about Betelgeuse's possible death. When the star ultimately explodes, it will make front page news for months. Quote, when it happens, the star will become as bright as the full moon, except that it will be concentrated in a single point. Uh, Montarges said, and then continuing, for maybe two months, it will be so bright that if you shut all the lights in a city and have no clouds, you would be able to read a book in the light of the supernova. <laughs> that is pretty incredible. It will be so bright that it'll be uh, visible in the daylight too. There will be another star shining in the st in the sky during the day. Of course, that's in addition to our own star, the sun. Okay, the last known supernova to have exploded in, in the Milky Way galaxy was SN1604 also known as the Kepler supernova. It was named after astronomer Johannes Kepler, who described it in his book, De Stella Nova. According to historical records, that supernova, 30 times more distant from Earth than Betelgeuse, remained visible, visible during the day for over three weeks. Now, I'm guessing that 1604, it's probably 1604, and that's when it happened. Let me just open this up this link. I didn't look into that. Uh, Kepler's supernova, huge 17th century star explosion comes into focus. Okay. So yeah, yeah, it happened at that time. So that was the last supernova that supernova that we saw here on earth, uh, in our own Milky Way galaxy. Uh, I believe that they've seen other ones in other galaxies. So 1604, sorry, I need to do a little tangent. I know that upsets some people. Let me go to back to 1604 in my timeline. Um, my data for these these years are a lot more. It's a lot more scarce, scant. 1604. Uh, well, that was the year after the 1603 London plague epidemic. Uh, it was bubonic plague. Eight years war was going on. So I don't know. There may have been other things going on there going on at that time i have no idea um yeah okay so let's go back let's go back okay uh montarges expects beetlejuice to soon return to within its limits for the next few months the star won't be visible as it will get too close to the sun astronomers will have to wait until the end of the summer to check on its progress <clears throat> Quote, if in September it's still as bright as now or brighter, then we we would we should start wondering what's happening, said Montargis. But from my perspective, I don't think it is that interesting at this stage. <laughs> don't, don't they always like say stuff like this and then they end up being wrong? Not all the time, but I can think of a few times where similar statements were made and it was completely wrong. <laughs> Uh, let's look at the Hebrew calendar really quick to close this up. Hebcal.com. I love this website. So useful. So this is a, it overlays the Jewish year on top of the, the or the Hebrew calendar on top of the Gregorian calendar. So September is usually the time of Rosh Hashanah. Not always, some years. It lands in October, although it seems like most of the time it is in September. And in this case, uh, it's going to be right in the middle of, of the month of September. It's going to start at sundown on the 15th, in fact, of September. So uh, this is going to be around the time when we're going to be able to see Beetlejuice again. And uh, that's just going to be a couple weeks before General Conference. Uh, Rosh Hashanah... The first like full day, uh, the way that we would think of it, is going to be on the 16th. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then general conference is going to be one, two. Well, that, see, this is what I don't know. I can't remember if this is the general conference that like straddles uh, the two months. Let me see. 
uh, dates for general conference October 2023. It's going to be Saturday. No, that's uh, that's April. I'm looking for. Oh, here it is. October 20. Yeah, it's going to be the 30th of, of September and the 1st of October. Um, which I, I really don't think that happens very often. But, okay, so let's go back to the calendar. So in this case, so what's interesting is uh, you'll have Rosh Hashanah two weeks later. Uh, Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles, is going to begin. And on that same day, so is General Conference. So those are some interesting things to line up. All right. Well, uh, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you, Eric. This has been mighty interesting. I had no idea about these developments with Beetlejuice. Uh, I find it stunning. And uh, if, if, any of, if any of you guys ever come across interesting news like this, uh, if you wouldn't mind, send it my way, you know, and we'll we'll put it on this timeline and then we can kind of put all this what seems to be the most significant uh, stuff together, see if it correlates. And uh, in some cases, it it seems like it does. Uh, yeah, I don't think Beetlejuice is just any star. OK, well, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it. And I'll talk to you guys later. Amount of Olives cleaves in two this year. <laughs>